Hello, this is Marshall Presser from Piddle Engineering, introducing the Green Plum database. In the next few minutes, we'll explore how the Pivotal Green Plum database architecture works and explain why it's proficient in doing big data analytics. Understanding the architecture will help you make efficient use of the Green Plum database. If you're listening in here, you're likely to be part of an organization that's a huge amount of data to load and analyze in order to make effective business decisions. We're going to help you do that. But first, a little history. When people first moved away from expensive mainframe computers, they did their data analytics in symmetric multiprocessors. They'd start with a small box, but would soon outgrow it and then move to a bigger box. And when they outgrew that, they'd move to yet a bigger one. Cost became prohibitive and performance began to suffer. So people in the data world came to do what people in the scientific computing world had done, scaling out rather than scaling up. In an MPP scale out architecture, we increase computing power and storage by starting small and then adding capacity in the way of more small computers. In most MPP architectures today, the nodes are usually small Linux servers with enough CPU, RAM, and I.O. power for the needs at hand. And when we run out of any of these resources, we add another node or two. Since each node has its own memory, operating system, CPU, and storage with its own set of disks, this architecture is known as a shared nothing architecture. Before we start, let's take a brief analogy. I have a colleague with a large collection of business cards. He exchanges business cards with everyone he meets and he's collected about 10,000 business cards. Being no fool, he keeps them sorted in alphabetical order, last name, first name. And when he needs to look up someone's contact information and he knows the name, it's a no-brainer. He goes to roughly the correct place in the alphabet, scans a few cards, and gets what he needs in a few seconds. Occasionally, he needs different information. He's visiting Acme Widget and wants to find all his contacts who work for them. This requires going through all the cards. Now, he can scan through the cards at a pretty rapid rate, say, 100 a minute. And for his current card stack, this would take 10,000 divided by 100 equals 100 minutes. This is too long, and he came to me for advice. Don't you have interns working for you? Why not enlist the help of 10 of them, divide the cards equally amongst the 10, and have each intern scan the cards in parallel? 10,000 cards divided by 10 interns equals 1,000 cards per intern, assuming the interns can also scan cards at 100 per minute. They can get the job done in 10 minutes, which is a 10x speed up over a single user. And if we'd use 50 interns, the job could be finished in two minutes, a 50x speed up. We get linear scalability from this strategy. Our parallel solution has the advantage of faster lookups. And my friend can also use a similar parallel strategy for loading new sets of cards he gets it the next time he goes to a strata conference. Notice the process is the same whether we used 20 or 30 or 50 items. Anytime he wants to ask a question of the business card, my colleague doesn't know, had, does not need to know how many interns he has or where the data is. The parallelism is transparent to him once the cards are distributed. So, with that in mind, in this lesson, we'll explore the features and benefits offered in the Green Plum database. You will also examine the high-level architecture to understand why the Pivotal Green Plum database successfully handles mission-critical big data analytics. In the Green Plum database, the data is divided into shards or segments. Think of a segment as some portion of the data and the operating system Postgres-like processes needed to analyze this data. Many of these segments run on a single host called a segment server. There are usually small Linux servers with two multi-core processors, a sizable amount of memory, and most important, they own their own non-shared disks. The minimum number of segment hosts in production is usually four, but we have customers with well over 100. 
But users never access these segment servers directly. They speak to the master server, which has a Postgres instance running with the metadata about the Green Plum database instance. All of the user data resides on the disks in the segment servers, but the metadata lives on the disks on the master. The master parses the query, develops a work plan, and then hands that work off to the segment servers. When they're finished, they return the result. There's also a standby master you can see here just to the right of the master that gets activated should the master fail. In order to facilitate communication, there's also a private interconnect or network between the segment servers and the master. It's important that this is not part of a public network, as adequate bandwidth and latency on this network are necessary for good performance. For example, in doing joins, it's often the case that data moves across this interconnect from one segment to another. If the network is being shared with non-Greenplum database users doing file transfers, let us say, performance will likely suffer. But some other servers are also plumbed into the private network. For speed and data loading, we can put the raw, unprocessed data on these servers and then load data in parallel across all of uh, the segment servers in what is called scatter gather. We'll discuss this more in another section. How does this work in practice? Users and administrators have access to Greenplum through a variety of tools. You don't need special tools to access the Greenplum database. Tools and drivers such as ODBC, JDBC, OLEDB can be used to access the Greenplum database. You can access your environment with GUI tools like pgAdmin3, the most popular open source administration and development platform for Postgres. And many people use PeakSQL, the command line tool, similar again to Postgres SQL users. Third party tools like BI tools and ETL tools and data mining tools can connect to the GPDB transparently through JDBC or ODBC. Um, similarly, as visualization tools would connect, because to them it looks just like a PostgreSQL database. Some vendors have produced connectors that make use of some of Greenplum's parallel features, but in a way completely transparent to the users. For administration, Greenplum Command Center lets administrators manage and monitor the state of the system and workloads, including system metrics and query details. Command Center provides a dashboard for managing and monitoring the system and database along with its queries. You can drill down into queries details and explain plan to understand its performance. Greenplum's workload manager, part of Command Center, allows rule-based control of queries, preventing runaways and throttling down others. Greenplum's package manager lets you install additional supported languages and packages like PostGIS, a standard graphical information system, through a package management utility. To load data and access external data, Greenplum offers a variety of ways. Using the scatter-gather technology I talked about before, Greenplum can perform high-performance loading and unloading of data, and with each additional node in the cluster, the speed at which the loads, the parallel data ingest and unloads and output increases linearly. Greenplum database performs high, uh, provides high performance parallel import and export from the Hadoop clusters. And when the data is coming in a continuous stream, micro batching allows data to be loaded at frequent intervals, such as every five minutes, while maintaining extremely high data ingest rates. In addition, Anywhere Access allows you to access and make available external data to the Greenplum database through a variety of tools, including such things as external web tables, which we'll talk about later. In in terms of its storage access, Greenplum has two kinds of storage, the traditional row-based storage as well as column-based storage. And in fact, within a given table, certain portions can be stored column-wise and certain portions can be stored uh, row-wise depending upon the use case. This is known as polymorphic storage. 
We also have in-database compression. Now, compression not only makes your data smaller, but in many cases makes it faster because it decreases the amount of I.O. required to access that data. We provide index support of various kinds, though we tend in general to be an index poor database compared to traditional OLTP databases. And as I mentioned before, external tables provide a way to look at data outside the database as though it was a table and make use of it in loading and unloading. Furthermore, in terms of language support, Greenplum Database supports a comprehensive SQL 2003 with OLAP extensions with the ability to write uh, user-defined functions in Java, C, Perl, Python, and R. Um, you, we find that much of our data science analytic use makes use of these tools. Um, in addition to which, we support a, an open source library called Madlib of uh, commonly used uh, uh, machine learning tools. And we provide package management of these languages. In order to support scalability, we have some other features inherent in GreenPlum. Multi-level fault tolerance. So the database can continue to work even if the master server falls or a segment fails or a segment host fails. Um, workload management allows database administrators to use work queues to move jobs through the system efficiently and quickly. And further, there is online system expansion. So the Greenplum database can expand to accommodate more segment hosts while the database is up and running as your data volume increases. So highlights of the Greenplum database, it's uh, at its core, it's an MPP, a massively parallel processing system. It's a shared nothing system, which means that each individual node has its own directly attached storage. We have a parallel query optimizer that goes in parallel, looks at the many ways a complicated query can be executed and chooses the best plan. And polymorphic data storage supports tiered data with different storage and execution and compression settings depending upon the use case. Again, scatter-gather technology across that private interconnect, very important to the running of the system, can get data coming in at extremely high rates in excess of 10 terabytes an hour. So, Put all together, we've got client access, third-party tools, administrative tools, various ways of loading and storing data in a variety of languages. And we have multi-level fault tolerance, workload management, online system expansion going on. How does this help you? One, faster performance, faster loads and faster queries. Two, we will talk about later, Analytics, where the data lives. We don't believe in the policy of using the database to store data and then moving a data set to be analyzed out to a separate analytic engine. We believe you should run the analysis where the data lives. Flexibility and control. You can acquire the Greenplum database either as software and run it on your own hardware, or alternatively, you can purchase an appliance. It has centralized management through command center. And because of many of the features we've built into, it has enterprise class reliability and linear scalability as you increase the number of nodes in the system. So thanks very much. In future episodes, we will talk about some of the other features of the database in greater detail.